On a Google Hangout, I got asked about how to do step input into Cubase. Step input allows MIDI data to be entered into the sequencer without having to do a real-time recording. It's often used for doing like EDM tracks and programming drums. So let's take a look at how we can get this set up inside of Cubase. So step entry is actually initiated directly from within the editor. So if I have a drum part loaded up but haven't recorded anything, we may not be able to do step entry until we create a blank part. We could do that by drawing in a blank part with our pencil tool, like so. If I have my left and right locators, I could double click with my object selection tool or with my range selection tool to create a blank part. So once I double click here, we could launch our drum editor for this particular part. We see this series of icons here. Uh, and when we have this one illuminated orange, this indicates that we have step input enabled. If for some reason you don't see this series of icons, right click in the icons here and the info line and make sure that step input is active. If you still don't see it for some reason, you could also change the position of the particular group of icons just like that in the setup window. So once we have this setup window and step input, active, we can use our left and right arrow keys on our computer keyboard to navigate. And we may notice that this is going to be set to fixed rhythmic value of 16th notes. This is kind of intrinsically tied directly to the quantized value. So if I switch it to quarter notes or to eighth notes, it'll just advance. So this blue line indicates exactly where notes would be entered in. So as soon as I hit a MIDI note message from my controller, it will capture that particular note message. And you have different icons here. It will default primarily to being the record pitch and the record down velocity. But if I wanted to actually fix the velocity, we could have our insert velocity here. So if I wanted to put in the same exact velocity intentionally for my kick drums, regardless of how hard or how soft I hit it, I could fix the velocity based on these different values here. So if I wanted to switch and we could change those particular values as well. So very easy to input that. Now, if I wanted to take my snare and I activate this, we could actually record our note on velocities. So depending on how hard I hit the input, the velocity is captured as I'm doing the step, in, the step input from the MIDI controller. So, and then we could also do release velocities. A lot of times you won't have to worry about that. Often when doing step input, you may realize that you've forgotten a particular note or if you needed to input notes, at this point you could activate this icon which would allow you to do the insert mode. So now, as soon as I input those notes, it would automatically move the rest of the notes directly over to the right. Now, as I've worked with this, I have it activated in cycle mode, but if I wanted to go to extend beyond the actual part, I could just keep going directly using my left and right arrows and enlarge the part. If the cycle mode is turned on, what it allows you to do is once it gets to the end, it could automatically just go directly to the beginning of the part. So let's say if I wanted to now program a quick drum beat. So I'll just take off my insert mode and let's start with some 16th notes. So I'm just gonna hit my kick and snare kind of randomly in advance in time using my arrow key. All right, so now at this point, let's put in some hi-hats. So we'll kind of scroll down so we can see the hi-hats as we're entering them in. All 
All right, and let's find some percussion. All right, so I'm just going to switch my drum visibility agent so you can see the sounds with events. And let's go ahead and listen to our beat. It's a completely unplanned. All right, so let's say we wanted to add a bass part. So I will double click on the bass part. When working with more musical aspects, one of the things to be aware of is we could have our rhythmic position set to different values, but if I wanted the length of the note to be different, we could have that determined by our length quantize. And again, if you don't see that, just make sure within one of the key editors, list editor, or the score editor, you have the length quantize set there. So if I have it set to quarter notes, I could put in notes based on 16th notes that are a quarter note long. A lot of times you may want to just choose to come here and say, and choose quantize link, and that will make the length of the note the same as the rhythmic value. So let's go back and let's enter in a quick bass line here. And let's go ahead and listen to those two together. So. All right, and if we wanted to do, let's say a pad sound here, I wanted my, uh, my quantize value set to whole notes and we'll quantize link and I'll just play four chords. And let's say I'll just take out the one mistake I made there real quick. And now we could just kind of play that back and you can see how quickly. You could just kind of come up with quick parts. Store, score editing is also a great spot for working with our step input. So if I wanted to come here to the score editor, let's say let's put in some eighth notes on my cello. So very easy to work within your score editor as well for entering in scores using step input. A lot of times people assume that step input is associated with very rhythmically stable, very rhythmically quantized feels, but we could do kind of grooves within our step input as well. So if I wanted to look at this particular drum part here, so let's go ahead and we'll just solo this drum groove. And I wanted to do step input, but based upon that actual feel, I could go to my quantize panel and I'm going to just drag that drum part to my quantize panel and that will make a preset. So if I wanted to now input notes from my bass here, I can use instead of just eighth notes or 16th notes, I could use the groovy drum feel for that. And let's go ahead and just put in a quick bass line here. So 
So now if I wanted to play the, that particular drum groove with step inputted, and have the step input follow the particular quantize the groove of the drums. We're not limited to just very rhythmically stale aspects. When using step input, we could use existing grooves. So there's a lot of great options for working with step input in Cubase. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.